True. Now, Dr. Mark, I've read that you've run over a hundred different, you know, a hundred marathons and ultra marathons. Do you ever get naysayers who, you know, say, I can't, th- you know, that can't be good for your body. You know, you're going to ruin your knees, ruin your hips, the things that we've mm-hmm. all heard, you know, what would you say about, you know, the pros and cons of, of running long distance that much? Yeah, I think it's a great question, and like every answer, it depends. Um, we're all individuals, and we all need individual assessments. So, I I don't think if you train correctly and you're healthy, if you're not healthy, it's not good to run marathons. You know, so if you have cardiovascular disease, diabetes, you know, you have something structural going on. No, and a lot of that stuff's under the hood, and you just don't know. So, having a physician who can assess your risk before you go do that. That one day is pretty stressful running a marathon, but the training shouldn't be stressful. The training's really recovery. But there's a lot of runners out there, you know, and I've I have known several who've gone out for a run and haven't come home from cardiovascular disease, and and mm. they just didn't know. And that's where you know I've been involved in a couple cardiac trials because you hear, okay, well it's bad. All this mileage is bad for your heart, and I'm just well I'll line up for about any study, <laughs> right. and knock on wood, you know, mine have been good. You know, a, a study that people could have done is a coronary artery calcium score. That'll tell you if you have any calcium in your arteries. My, my father had a heart attack at 35, so I want to know, mm-hmm. you know, if, if I'm good or not. You know, if I had a lot of plaque in my arteries right now, I'd be trying to figure that out. So I think you do need someone to guide you based on your risk and your family and looking at your lab values. And are you type A or not type A? You know, I've, I've dialed that down a bit. In my running, at least, I think I'm too busy with other things. But you know, a lot of marathon runners, they're just type A, and they're stressed, and they're driving, and they're trying to do this stuff, you know, in the context of a really busy life, and that's not healthy. And they might be driving themselves to ill health while they're trying to get fit and super fit. Phil Maffetone's written a bunch on that, so fitness and health aren't the same thing. Mm. So I think if folks like Josh and I can just get people to be able to individually assess their state of health then it's all good. Exactly. I mean, you know, ra- marathons, race day is probably not good for your health. Race day, <clears throat> but the training should be. You know, you go out there, that's like the monkey bar day. That's the challenge. It empowers you to do other things. You know, for people that have done ultras, I mean, going and doing those is probably not really good for your health. But what it does afterwards might be really powerful for your life. And the training might have, you know, been really good for whatever you're trying to kind of work out. Can you, the, you know, the, the, the event itself is just probably one one hundredth of the whole process. Can you just elaborate for a, a second on, on how the event itself might not be beneficial for your health? Yeah, so if you're unhealthy and you have, let's, let's pick the number one reason people are going to, you know, not finish the marathon and, and not go home to their family that night. And you know what I mean by that? Like, so it's cardiovascular like have a heart attack, disease. Drop- Drops yeah, they're going to have a heart rich. attack and they're going to they're going to drop from a cardiovascular event either an arrhythmia or a plaque rupture. You know, people do not die of dehydration. I know we have aid stations, you'll stop running and now heat strokes a different issue if you're a race director and it's black flag and you got a 10k, you better make sure you're either going to cancel that event or have safety precautions out for that. But let's just take a marathon. So the number one reason for death in marathons is cardiovascular events. In people who have underlying coronary disease. So each person really needs to assess if they're going to go run marathons, which that one day might add a little bit of adrenaline stress, sheer stress, some hypoxic stress that could cause them, just like a firefighter or a police officer, you know, they, majority of them now have underlying cardiovascular disease based on their lifestyle. Hmm. And in that small part of their day job, which is going to be really stressful, they're at really high risk. You know, that 1% to 2% of their day, which is super high stress, an EMS worker, Angie worked in a hospital, so an EMS worker, you know, 99% of the day is pretty mellow sitting around the station eating donuts, and then that 1% of the day, you know, is really like you're doing CPR on someone, your adrenaline is up, and that's, you know, that's race day. So we don't want that that to be a dangerous scenario. My dad was a police uh, officer, and he used to say that uh, police work was 99% boredom and 1% sheer terror. (laughs) So, (laughs) (laughs) if you're not healthy, the sheer terror is not going to come home to roost. Exactly. So, so you're saying when uh, the marathon event is not healthy, it's because of the risk of a cardiac event. I was also kind of interpreting that too by saying that the strain that you put upon your heart during an ultra, during a marathon, is not necessarily healthy. 
Although the training, you know, the easy runs, the zone two stuff is. Yeah, and a healthy person's going to, you know, going to adapt just fine. So, you know, I mean, they've done, you know, cardiac enzymes after marathons. Healthy people, no cardiac disease. Your cardiac enzymes bump just a little bit. But that's not, okay. people interpret that and say, well, you just had, you did damage to your heart. No, that's just like if you, we did a CPK on you, you know, which is a muscle enzyme, it's off the chart. But that doesn't mean you'd, you wouldn't do that every day to yourself. But a healthy body's going to recover. Yeah. So there's that healthy stress. But what, what I was pointing out, Trevor, is if you do have underlying cardiovascular disease, you better be careful. And a lot of people sure. just don't know. And that's where they need to, as you get older, if it's in your family, you know, seek out the opinion of a doctor who understands how to do a good assessment of your risk before you and, go out there. Yeah. And for me, it, it kind of goes back to that, those three things that I was just talking about. So, you know, as a, a doctor, say, with, with steady MD. Like I really hope to be able to prepare my patients to be able to be able to take on the marathon in a, in a healthy fashion. Yeah. And then next step is you know make sure that whatever training plan that they're on, if they don't have a coach, you know just make sure it makes sense, mm -hmm. and to just be there be there for them so they can be healthy. You know, an analogy that I like to use as a doctor is to just kind of. I like to practice to kind of be there like a doctor friend for my patients where they feel like I'm there for them. If they have something that they want to bounce off of me, if they've read something on the internet, if they've seen something from one of their friends or one of their friends is telling them about something, you know, I'd rather them come to me. Um, and you know, do I know everything? No, but I, I definitely am resourceful. And, you know, I, I try to make my, my, uh, decisions based on actual medical evidence.